Japan, a land of captivating contrasts and hidden treasures, has always fascinated the world with its unique blend of tradition and modernity. From its awe-inspiring natural landscapes to its intricate cultural nuances, there's so much more to Japan than meets the eye. Today, we embark on a journey of discovery as we unveil 10 remarkable secrets about this enigmatic nation. Number 1. Office naps aren't frowned upon. We all know that taking a little snooze at work is generally a big no-no in many countries. In Japan, things are a bit different. Even though it's a country famous for its long work hours and overtime, if you find yourself in a traditional Japanese company, don't be surprised if you hear alarm clocks going off around you. It's not uncommon to spot colleagues catching a few winks at their desks during lunch breaks or those late-night overtime sessions. And guess what? It's not considered a negative thing at all. You might be wondering, why on earth would napping at work be okay in Japan? Well, it all boils down to one thing, dedication. These power naps are seen as a testament to the employee's hard work and extreme dedication to the workplace. When you see someone taking a quick nap at their desk, it's not a sign of laziness, but rather a symbol of their commitment to giving their best, even if it means catching a few is in between. It's a unique aspect of Japanese work culture that truly sets it apart. Studies have shown that short naps can actually boost productivity and creativity. So it's not just about recharging your energy, but also about enhancing your overall performance. Imagine having a workplace that not only encourages hard work, but also recognizes the importance of a little midday recharge. It's no wonder that Japan continues to be a powerhouse when it comes to innovation and productivity. Number 2. University life focuses more on extracurricular activities. We all know about the intense competition to get into Japanese universities, but what happens once you're in might shock you. Japan is notorious for its rigorous university entrance exams. Every year, teenagers across the country face incredible stress as they prepare for these exams. It's like a battle to get into the right university. Once you finally make it through those dreaded exams and get admitted, university life takes a surprising turn. It's incredibly relaxed. Yep, you heard that right. Most Japanese students focus more on their hobbies and activities with friends than hitting the books during their four years at university. So, why this shift in focus? Well, part of it has to do with the Japanese culture of work hard, play hard. The intense dedication required to get into university seems to give students a well-deserved break when they finally make it in. Extracurricular activities become a massive part of university life, whether it's joining a sports club, participating in cultural clubs, or volunteering. Students immerse themselves in these activities, forming strong bonds with their peers along the way. Now let's talk about what happens after graduation. It turns out, only a fraction of Japanese graduates find employment in a field related to their degree. It's partly because many Japanese companies consider having a degree essential, but the subject of that degree, well, they often see it as irrelevant. In other words, it's not so much about what you study but more about having that piece of paper. Another interesting twist is that most office jobs in Japan come with a mandatory one-year training period regardless of what you studied in university. It's like a fresh start for everyone. A chance to learn the ropes of the job and adapt to the corporate environment. Number 3. Japan's train punctuality is astounding. Trains in Japan are a marvel in themselves. They're not just clean, comfortable, and convenient, but they also boast a reputation for being the most punctual in the world. Can you guess the average delay time for a Japanese train? It's an astounding 18 seconds. Why is this level of punctuality such a big deal? Well, picture this. You're rushing to a meeting or a class, and you're worried about missing your connection due to a delay. In many parts of the world, this scenario is all too common, but not in Japan. So what happens if you do face a delay on your daily morning commute in Japan? Here comes the fascinating part. In those rare cases, the station staff has your back. They'll issue a certificate upon request to confirm 
that the delay was indeed the train company's fault. Imagine having proof for your boss or teacher that it wasn't your fault. Isn't that just incredible? It's this level of attention to detail and customer service that sets Japan apart in the world of transportation. Let me know in the comments below if you've had any experiences with Japanese trains and how punctual they were. Number 4. On Valentine's Day, it's the women's treat. We're all familiar with how Valentine's Day is celebrated in many countries. It's the day when couples exchange gifts, chocolates, and flowers to express their love and affection. In most countries, both partners actively participate in making the day special for each other. But in Japan, it's a whole new ballgame. In Japan, the tradition on Valentine's Day is a bit one-sided, and the spotlight is on the women. While women do give gifts to their romantic partners, that's not where the story ends. A significant aspect of Valentine's Day in Japan revolves around women giving chocolates to their male co-workers. This is known as Yurikoko, which literally translates to obligation chocolate. Female office workers often go to great lengths, both in terms of time and money, to select and purchase special limited edition chocolates from popular stores. It's not just about the thought. Presentation and quality matter too. It's not necessarily romantic. It's more of a social obligation. This practice of giving chocolate to male colleagues is a way to maintain good relationships in the workplace and show appreciation. It's a bit like a friendly gesture, and it's not confined to just their romantic interests. Women may give Jurikoko to multiple male colleagues, bosses, and even friends. It's not a one-way street. Exactly one month later, on the 14th of March, it's time for the gentleman to return the favor. This day is known as White Day in Japan. On White Day, men are expected to give their female co-workers chocolates, but not just any chocolates. They are supposed to give back three times the amount of chocolates they receive from the women on Valentine's Day. This reciprocal gesture on White Day is a way to express gratitude for the chocolates they received and to reciprocate the kindness they experienced a month earlier. Number 5. Japan's incredible number of vending machines. Did you know that Japan boasts a staggering 5.52 million vending machines across the country? That's right, you heard me correctly. 5.52 million. It's like they've got a vending machine for every mood, every need, and every whim. In most countries, you'd expect to find snacks like chips, gums, candies, sodas, and chocolates in vending machines and Japan's no exception. In the land of the rising sun, they've taken the art of vending to a whole new level. Need fresh eggs for breakfast? No problem. Craving some rice for dinner? They've got you covered. And for that special someone, how about a bouquet of fresh flowers? Yep, you can get that too. Imagine needing toilet paper in a pinch, or an unexpected rain shower catches you without an umbrella. No worries. Japan's got you sorted. And if you're into fishing, guess what? You can grab some bait from a vending machine. Number 6. Face masks are commonly worn in Japan. You know, COVID-19 really changed the way people around the world think about face masks. But here in Japan, they've been a part of daily life for the average person for a very long time. It's not just about protecting oneself from illness, as you might think. Contrary to what many believe, the Japanese primarily wear these masks not for their own safety, but to safeguard the health of those around them. One interesting reason behind this is the work culture in Japan. Unlike in some other countries, taking a sick day isn't always a common practice in many Japanese companies. So, even when feeling under the weather, employees often soldier on and head to work. And when you're on a packed train, Keeping a distance from fellow passengers just isn't an option. Hay fever is quite common in Japan, affecting a significant portion of the population. These masks come in handy to help ease the symptoms. They act as a barrier against pollen, providing some much needed relief for those suffering from allergies. Another interesting use of face masks in Japan is to hide your makeup flaws. You see, in Japanese culture, 
It's considered polite and professional to always look put together. So if you're having a day where your makeup isn't quite up to snuff, a face mask can be a stylish solution. Number seven, eating raw horse meat is perfectly normal in Japan. Many of us might be taken aback by the idea of indulging in raw horse meat, but in Japan, it's a culinary tradition that dates back many, many years. Known as basashi, it's not a recent fad, but a practice deeply rooted in Japanese culture. You'll find it on the menu in various restaurants across the country, where it's enjoyed with great gusto. It's actually a healthier option compared to pork or beef. Not only is it high in protein, but it's also remarkably low in calories. Plus, it's rich in linoleic acid, which is great for heart health. And here's a fun fact for you. It's less prone to E. coli contamination. So not only is it delicious, it's also good for you. Eating horse meat may even have some unexpected longevity benefits. In fact, a demographic study from 2013 revealed something truly fascinating. Residents of the Nagano Prefecture, where horse meat is commonly consumed, boasted the highest life expectancy in Japan. Men were living up to an impressive 80.88 years, while women were reaching a staggering 87.18 years. And their secret? You guessed it. Their diet, which included horse meat. Number 8 to 1000. 500 earthquakes hit Japan every year. Japan, often praised for its beauty and safety, is paradoxically one of the most earthquake-prone regions in the world. It's not due to high crime rates, but rather its unique geographical location. You see, Japan rests atop four colossal tectonic plates. When these plates shift, they give rise to earthquakes. Among these seismic events, one stands out, the Tohoku earthquake of 2011. This colossal event registered a magnitude of 9.0, making it the strongest and largest earthquake ever recorded in Japan's history. It was a true cataclysm. However, in terms of casualties, it claimed around 29,000 lives. Japan's deadliest earthquake, the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923, had a magnitude of only 7.9, significantly lower than the Tohoku quake. Yet it resulted in a staggering loss of 142,800 lives. It serves as a grim reminder that magnitude alone doesn't dictate the extent of devastation. These seismic events have left an indelible mark on Japan's history, with billions of dollars in property damage and thousands of lives lost. The resilience of the Japanese people in the face of such adversity is truly awe-inspiring. Number 9. Baseball is very popular in Japan. Sumo might be Japan's national sport, but did you know that baseball holds a special place in the hearts of the Japanese people? Known as Yaku in Japanese, this American-born sport has woven itself deeply into the fabric of Japanese culture. Back in 1873, an American teacher named Horace Wilson introduced baseball to Japan. Under his guidance, the very first baseball game in Japanese history was played at Tokyo University, known then as Kaisetigako. Little did they know, this moment would mark the beginning of a love affair between Japan and baseball. Today, baseball is the most cherished team sport in Japan. It's not just a game, it's a passion that unites people across the nation. Japan boasts not one, but two professional baseball leagues, the Pacific League and the Central League. These leagues showcase some of the finest talents in the sport, drawing crowds and creating moments of sportsmanship that are etched in the nation's memory. High schools and universities all over Japan have caught the baseball bug. You can find young talents honing their skills on fields, dreaming of one day making it big in the professional leagues. One of the most exciting events on the Japanese sports calendar is the high school baseball tournaments. These tournaments feature some of the most promising young athletes, and the anticipation leading up to these games is nothing short of electric. It's not just a local affair either. These games are broadcasted on national television, captivating audiences across the country. Number 10. Japan has a very high suicide rate. Japan, a country known for its wealth, captivating history, and vibrant culture, 
holds a dark secret that often goes unnoticed by many in the West. Behind its visual splendor lies a staggering suicide rate. Each year, over 30,000 Japanese men and women take their own lives. To put this in perspective, it's estimated that 24.4 out of every 100,000 Japanese citizens will tragically end their own lives. This alarming statistic makes suicide a major concern in Japan, ranking among the leading causes of death for women aged 15 to 34 and men aged 20 to 44. But why does a nation so advanced and prosperous grapple with such a distressing issue? Unemployment stands out as a significant contributor, failing to secure employment positions itself as one of the primary triggers for Japan's high suicide rate. What's particularly disheartening is that many of those affected are young adults, freshly graduated and hopeful for their futures. Beyond job-related struggles, depression and financial hardship play crucial roles in driving this distressing trend. The weight of these emotional and financial burdens becomes too much for some to bear, leading them down a path of despair. It's crucial to recognize that while Japan excels in many areas, it is not immune to the human struggles that plague societies worldwide. The high suicide rate in Japan is a poignant reminder that even amidst prosperity, we must remain vigilant in supporting mental health and addressing societal pressures. I hope you enjoy these surprising facts and that they've sparked your curiosity about this incredible nation. If you want to discover even more fascinating facts about Japan, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for our next video.